fun to write characters that ultimately do not serve a story. It asks authors to do the hardest oh thing imaginable. Oh my god, this, this video is just yapping. Events, it's just yapping. Farfa, only you can hear this. You too must murder your darlings. Can I really hear him right now? He's inside of my bus. You know what you must do. Uh, do what to who now? To tour guide of the underworld. I must murder my darling. I must murder. Fuck, I didn't actually mean to do that. <laughs> it doesn't confirm. Oh my god. This is not a bit, by the way. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! My name is Farfa, aka Nadir. It's the beginning of the month, so you know what that means. A Patreon request. This week we have Burning Abyss. With the semi-limiting of Super Heavy Samurai Wagon, it's always the third one that gets you. We know that this deck is a shoe-in for the meta. So, here is the deck list. As always, I'll give you a background of the archetype, a little of what this deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by twitch.tv forward slash N-Y-H-M-N-I-M. Subscribe if you're enjoying this kind of content, and stop! Stop calling me Fartfa. Stop calling me Barfa, Maldfa, and even Shartfa. I've heard it all. Stop it. So here is the decklist, an unconventional take on the Burning Abyss archetype. This deck utilizes a small Burning Abyss engine in order to get to Cherubini. Cherubini is the combo enabler that allows you to go into Block Dragon, searching multiple level 4 Earth monsters, and doing a full crazy wombo combo to end on a big board of multiple disruptions for your opponent. We also have the power of Sekka's Light, a card which can allow us to have immense draw power and fix our hand from these janky Burning Abyss monsters. We have Pankatar for going second and the heavy hitter of Black Luster Soldier. While this deck is very xenophobic in that it cannot stand the presence of any other monster on the field, that's why we're playing three copies of Fiendish Rhino Warrior. Accessing powerful extra deck capabilities with the link summoning mechanic and link climbing, we are able to get into some powerful go second place. Now while this deck is primarily designed for going first, you will notice that absolutely none of these cards are present in this video. I found this deck list online and it's the worst thing I've ever seen. This isn't even how you play Block BA. This first duel is against Joshua Schmidt, the reigning world champion using his signature deck runix we lose the dice roll here and he's going to lead with the flashing fire in order to dispatch summon a monster he goes for the hugan but we chain max c we have the ghost mortar to negate the search of the runic fountain to prevent the draws but oh no what is that that is a majesty's fiend we're not gonna be able to activate monster effects for this duel so uh uh that's a bit yikes however we do top deck the infinite impermanence this is going to allow us to special summon farfa that's me and also normal summoning scarm we're gonna go for a darius play up into machine x this allows us to make a monster big enough to attack over the majesty's fiend oh but what's that we're gonna keep xc climbing with the seven and sins. We try and go to the battle phase and declare an attack to make a huge Zeus, but they have Synchro Zone. Gosh darn it. I guess we're gonna have to use our main phase 2 to go into Tribuny. Special summoning out the Seer from the deck. Kagna's gonna send Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss, and then we're gonna go for Nightmare Unicorn, expending our last and final resource to try and finally out this last back row before we do even more plays. He goes for Jerry here. We use Seer to bring back a monster here, and they get to perform a Synchro Summon on our turn with that Synchro Zone. He goes into Chaos Angel, banishing our Unicorn, and we're kinda left with nothing here, unfortunately. He topped a Majesty's Fiend, which isn't going to do anything here. He passes turn. He's walling up with the Chaos Angel, which is indestructible by battle because of the effect of the Chaos Angel being made with a Light Monster. We go to the battle phase and attack over with the Seven Sins. This allows us to at least conduct some kind of a play here. We go for a Zeus with six materials. In the end phase, we get a Skarm Search with our Graph. He draws for turn and gets a Pot of Desires off the top. That's pretty good. Go to the battle phase here, clears our Zeus before we can do anything. It is unaffected, so using it would be kind of useless. He tributes summons for a Majesty's Fiend, Pot of Desires, banishing, drawing two cards, and setting two more runics to the field. Oh boy, what a job we've got in for us now. The Majesty's Fiend is live, so we aren't able to do anything and activate any of our monster effects, so we're just gonna have to pass on this Tribuny. He top decks a Clockwork Knight, which is gonna be really good for his ability to attack over our monsters. He clears our Tribuny, and in main phase two, uh, does nothing. We pass over back to our turn. Oh boy, we better hope we get an infinite impermanence here. We can't do anything here, so we just set a Kagna. He draws for turn here, and it's basically curtains here unless we see an out to this Majesty Sphinx. Now, we are able to just set a monster every turn and block up the life points from being destroyed. However, it's not looking too good for us. We draw for turn here, and oh boy, there it is, another infinite impermanence. We draw the out, we negate the Majesty Sphinx, and we can proceed to special summon our monsters. But what's that? That is a flashing fire destroying our monster, leaving us with no ability to exceed and basically dead next turn. This next duel is against one of the new meta threats, and that is Tistina. We have a pretty good hand here. We're going to special summon Terratom. Overlay 
play for Dante and go for a mill here, try and get some good targets into our graveyard for that transaction rollback. We don't hit anything here, so we're just gonna special summon two monsters, go for another Dante, mill three, and trigger the Graph and the Backjack, as well as Barbar getting a little bit of burn damage in. We're gonna special summon Seer from the deck here. This allows us to link up into IP Masquerina. Seer target Dante, Dante target Seer. We're gonna bring back the Dante from the graveyard, adding back a name to our hand here in order to fulfill the summoning conditions of Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal. We set Karma Cut with a transaction rollback in the hand here, and that is gonna be it. He top decks Maxi for turn, which isn't great for him. I bet he wish he had that last turn. He goes for the Testina Field spell, chains the Maxi to the Masquerina. That's gonna allow us to go into Nightmare Unicorn. Nightmare Unicorn will allow us to get this transaction rollback into the graveyard, spinning away that all important field spell, and Dante adds back a card for the Karma Cut. We get Seer back to the hand here. They special summon, we Karma Cut away the bird, and Seer triggers to bring back Dante. He activates his card effect, gets the field spell again. We're gonna go backjack. Backjack is gonna send Fiendish Rhino Warrior. We're gonna send Kagna. Kagna sends Fire Lake, and Transaction Rollback gets to copy the Fire Lake, paying half our life points to destroy two cards on the field. The field spell is protected, unfortunately. We're gonna activate the Testina in the graveyard. Seer target Dante. Add back to the hand here to give us some resources for next turn. That's gonna special summon the Crystal God Testina. We're gonna activate Beatrice to send Farfa. Dante target Barbar. And we're gonna attempt to banish the Testina until the end phase. He special summons another bird here, destroying it, adding another Crystal God Testina. Special summoning the Crystal God Testina and getting the Continuous Spell. The Continuous Spell targets the Beatrice, setting it face down and gets the Discordance of the Testina from the deck. We're gonna special summon a bunch of those monsters, a keep attacking directly and whittling ourselves down to the end of the game, unfortunately losing to the Half-Life of Transaction Rollback. Well, it's not looking too good for us, but that's okay. We're gonna head into match number three, and you know what that means. A best of three against the meta, and that is Metaphys. We're gonna overlay into Dante and mill three, hit absolutely nothing, but that's okay. We've got Seer target Dante, Dante target Seer. Adding back a name to our hand here, not to bring back Dante to the field. This is gonna allow us to discard and special summon up into Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal. We don't have anything else to set here, so we're just gonna pass on Beatrice with some hand traps. Our opponent is going to activate Dimensional Fissure. That's not very good for our Beatrice, but that's okay. We can send Transaction Rollback. Soul Release has activated a Snake Eye Tech card that we are being caught in the crossfire of. He normal summons Ragnarok, activates the Ace of Metaphys to get some boost here, activates the effect of the Ragnarok, Rock and special summons out the Dallas, which banishes our entire field. That's great. We're gonna draw for turn here and try and hope that we get some kind of tour guide from the Underworld top deck. It doesn't look like it, so we're just gonna have to set a Ghost Mourner and pass. In the end phase, he's gonna activate the Ace of Metaphys, banishing and flip summoning our monster into attack mode with zero attack points. Ooh, not looking too good here. In the standby, he's going to activate a bunch of nothing effects, attack over with the Ragnarok in the battle phase, special summoning from the deck, and we die to the Metaphys. Well, that's game. All right, game number two. We better hope to try and pull this one back in reverse sweep because we're gonna go into Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss in the extra multi zone. We're gonna mill three cards here and use the Fender Shrine of Warrior as well as the Kagna. That's gonna set up that transaction rollback play. We get Seer out the deck here, go for IP Masquerina. Seer target Dante, Dante target Seer. This is gonna add back a name to our hand here, special summoning back the Dante to the field, setting up our all important Beatrice. We're gonna rank up into the Beatrice here and we could have set the transaction rollback, but that's okay. We don't really have a way to clear it. Our opponent's gonna normal summon this uh, trap monster here, which allows us to banish Sword Soul Blackout from the deck here. That's gonna get him a Moyi token. If my girl drowning, you know how it goes. We're gonna activate a bunch of Burning Abyss monsters in the graveyard here. Dante's gonna recycle. Farfa's gonna bash until the end phase. Ace of Metaphys is going to activate the search, but we have Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. In the end phase, we are going in the end of main, rather. We're gonna go into Nightmare Unicorn. Nightmare Unicorn discards to spend a card here. Seer's gonna target Dante, bringing back to the field and setting us up nicely for next turn. The Farfa brings back the monster at the end phase, and we draw for turn, top decking. An Ash Blossom. No way to make Beatrice, but that's okay. We're gonna try and go for a Zeus play here. We attack into the Moe token. He activates Trap Tricks. Ace of Metaphys activates the effect here. We're going to Ash the Graveyard effect here of the Banish, and unfortunately, this Ace of Metaphys is gonna put our Dante into defense mode, which means we are not able to go for the Zeus play. Dante targets here, and access code target Nightmare Unicorn, getting us a big monster on the field here, activating the effect to Banish and destroy one set card. We don't have any other plays here, so we're just gonna have to send us here and hope it gets us somewhere. He draws for turn here and activates the Ace of Metaphys, Banishing to add and also changing the attack modulation and level of his monster. We're gonna activate the Asymmetrous Dimension and then go up into a Link Summon. That's gonna be the IP Masquerina summoned to the opponent's field with the Dark, linking up into an indestructible access code talker. But then again, so is our access code. 
Oh, he's not going to fall for it and try and attempt to destroy ours. We do get to go for Seer. Seer floats into the Farfa. Farfa banishes access code until the end phase. He activates decoy and in the end phase, the Farfa brings back access code. But would you look at that? The restrictions or effects rather of the access code have been reset. It's now very small. So we can use the Ghost Mourner in the standby phase to negate the decoy coming back here. We can use our access code to destroy the decoy. Battle phase, clear the access code. But what is that? This Drake decoy is not going to do anything as it is negated. We clear the access code, set one transaction rollback, praying that he destroys it somehow, and we pass our turn. In the standby phase, we're going to activate the transaction rollback. Oh, the on-field effect is actually coming up. We get to copy a card in the graveyard for the trap trick and banish an imperm to get an imperm from our deck here. We negate the Ragnarok, and oh boy, that's a Metaphys Horus, and with the Pendulum effect, it gets to steal a monster on our side of the field. Attacks directly for a little bit of damage and takes us down here. We really need to draw Burning Abyss, Monster Road, Special Summon, and do something here, but would you look at that? That is a Dimension Shifter. The Special Summon Barbar, -bar, Tribute Set, the Dimension Shifter, and hopefully he falls for it and allows us to top deck some kind of tour guide. He goes to the battle phase here, activates the Ace of Metaphysics, banishing, flipping our monster in face-up attack position, also getting a Dynamicious, goes to the battle phase and attacks over, and that Dynamicious is going to banish and attack for a game with the Metaphys Horus. We activate Transaction Rollback, targeting Imperm to negate, but that is not going to do anything. Well, would you look at that? We didn't win a single game. Well, it's back to the drawing board. Our conclusions for this, ah, uh, what can I say? It's not really great. Let's go through the pros and cons. Well, the pros are many. You have a lot of abilities to swarm the field, activate your Cherubini to send and set up those amazing block dragon plates, which unfortunately we didn't get to do because of the meta fret. We had to rely on all these trap cards, which unfortunately didn't really get us anywhere, especially with the clashing of Sekka's light. So we're gonna have to cut that for the future. Block dragon unfortunately didn't come up as we just didn't have a way to search it in any of our games. Now, while this deck has the ability to swarm the field and create powerful monsters that deal with the opponent's field and attempt to OTK, it really wasn't working out for us because of just the sheer amount of hand traps in the format, which this deck can sometimes struggle against. But I guess that leads us into the cons. This deck was printed almost 10 years ago. It's time to move on, dismantle the deck, and get rid of this forever for the rest of my life. And now the best form of deck building available to Burning Abyss. That's right, we hit the delete deck button and confirm our choice. This right here is the freedom we have all been waiting for. Thank you everyone for watching, and until next time, adios! Alright, we're here with the fucking blooper reel, apparently. Gotta recraft this tour guide and hope I get a royal rare out of this at least. Okay, I just went minus 90 dust. Ask me anything. I guess technically it's like 180.